Today we gotta talk about this game that I just kept seeing on Steam every time I opened it up. Just by looking at the trailers, I knew that this was something that weebs would love. It's got a badass graffiti artist, some fast paced gameplay, and that cyberpunk aesthetic all wrapped up with a beautiful color palette. This game is called Rakugaki or just RKGK for short. And if you look it up on Google, you'll see that it literally translates to the word graffiti in Japanese. And just by looking at this, you can see exactly why it was called that. Plus for you weebs and Sonic fans out there, you might find a lot of fun stuff to look forward to here. So let's dig into what this game is and whether or not it's worth checking out. Rakugaki is like Sonic the Hedgehog and Jet Set Radio had a love child together. Everything from the gameplay to the characters just oozes with this rebellious story, some colorful art, and a Japanese urban aesthetic. We play as Vala, a talented graffiti artist who wants to take down the evil B Corporation and bring color back to Cap City. Out of all the ways she could have done this, her best bet was spray painting everything controlled by B Corp. Not only spraying the propaganda that's literally everywhere, but also every robot and floor she can get her paint on. She has a little robot companion named Ayo who helps out a ton. For a basketball sized bot, he brings more realness to the dialogue and matches up pretty well with Vala's free spirit. There's also other members of her group, but they don't have as much of an important role in the plot. But we do get to see one new member for every new part of the city we unlock. I wish this team was more like the team in Hi-Fi Rush, because there you could call your teammates into fights and it made them feel like they had more of an active role in what was taking place. But in RKGK, these guys don't do much besides standing around the base surrounded by stuff that matches their personalities. While they don't have a lot of development in the story, they make up for it by selling us some of the freshest clothes you could hope for. You can already tell that a lot of this game was inspired by Japanese styles, but even the costumes are highly inspired. They have a bunch of costumes with themes like Akira, Evangelion, Kill Bill, and my favorite Naruto Uzumaki. But of course, it has to be the OG blue and orange. Nigga, you could have been out here fucking bitches. So if there's anything you can say without a doubt, it's that the team behind this clearly wanted as much anime influence here as possible. Then when you get into all the graffiti, there's a bunch of really good designs that you'll end up tagging all over the place. There's things like samurai, ninjas, cyberpunk, and so many others that look great covering the billboards. And I love how it's not just regular graffiti and that it actually pops out at you. That's one of the best parts here since it focuses on that fun aesthetic rather than realistic graphics. Like I said, there's a few different reasons you can see the inspiration from Sonic, but the biggest one has to be the main villain, Mr. Buff. He's damn near exactly like Dr. Eggman with an army of robots that are ready to take Vala out in every single stage. Also side note, but I've been watching the One Piece dub recently and Mr. Buff's voice actor is also the same person who plays Queen in the Wano arc. So every time that he would come on screen and start talking, all I can imagine in my head is Queen just singing zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom and When you get into the stages and start spraying all over the place, you can see why I say this is close to Jet Set Radio in a few places. Your main goal is to tag these screens through every stage and get to the very end. But even if you don't find all the screens you can possibly tag, it's not a major deal. The gameplay loop here focuses on the kind of experience you want for yourself. So if you're someone who loves to collect every single item and check all the boxes, you can do that. There's a ton of coins and ghosts you can collect and you can raise your high scores and do time trials. There's a lot of hidden secrets and different ways to play so you can easily replay each stage and get more out of it each time. Things can get challenging after a while, but the mechanics are pretty easy to get used to. To help Vala gain more speed, she can spray the ground and surf without wasting any resources. Then when you get to those tricky platforming sections, Ayo will help you hover in midair while Vala sprays downward. And it's super helpful to take out enemies or just destroy boxes. Chaining these together with a grapple and an air dodge makes the platforming into a really fun time. It's also rewarding when you get a higher combo and enter her defacer mode. This is where both Vala and Ayo can smash through boxes and enemies with their surf and have a much stronger hover that boosts them even higher up. And there's not a lot of direct combat you need to get into outside of using your normal attack and your hover to kill bots. But when you do get into some of the boss battles, they test your ability to dodge and move around the arena to dodge waves of attacks. 
so I really appreciate them taking advantage of the movement as much as possible without making the combat feel sluggish. That's been one of my concerns with games like Bomb Rush Cyberfunk and Jet Set Radio since the combat can feel a bit forced at times. Because the devs want you to try and complete levels quickly or collect as much as you possibly can, the game can feel a bit on the short side for you. It took me about 7 hours to make it through all the stages at least once, but that'll be a bit longer if you want more out of it. There's still more costumes and graffiti you can unlock with the currency too, so if you vibe with everything then you'll definitely get your money's worth. Because these days, 20 bucks for a 7 hour game ain't half bad and you can even find this on sale for 15 which is great. I did have some lower expectations going into Rakugaki, but it ended up being a really fun time. All the beautiful art, the references, the music, and the fast paced gameplay made this into something I didn't want to pull myself away from. With this being the very first game developed by Wasabi Design, I can easily see them making some decent cult classics. It's just nice knowing unique and stylish games like this are still getting made by some creative ass indie devs. But let me know your thoughts on Rakugaki in the comments. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and I'll see you all in the next video.